friends, and welcome back to another episode of The Royal Family. We have a very fun episode planned. We're going to be covering a lot in this episode. As you can see, we will be focusing on Cornelius and Ellis later in this episode. We'll also see Han and Araminta. We're gonna see Diana, and we're gonna see Lady Ariana as well. But before we start, I do wanna give you guys a quick update. So I did see that Dowager Queen Lindsay has passed away. She was staying at the Oasis Springs Palace for a while, and now she's gone, so we are assuming she passed away. So she died of old age. Honestly, it was probably about time for her because everyone else in her generation pretty much already passed away. She was like the last to live. So I'm sure that the Oasis Springs royal family will be doing a funeral sometime soon. But now that she has passed away, we have Marky Michael or Prince Michael. He and Lady Helena got a divorce. I mentioned in a previous episode that they were waiting until his mother passed away because she wouldn't approve. They're actually the first couple I think that I've had get divorced. But they got divorced. Lady Helena actually moved back in with her sister in Willow Creek and they're sharing custody of the kids. So you might see the kids kind of like switching back and forth between the two houses every once in a while. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. But now we're gonna go see our Glimmerbrook royal family and guys, it has stopped raining. If you remember in the last episode, Anya has been banished and I was like, maybe it'll stop raining now that she's gone. And it did. And I'm like, honestly shocked and so happy too because it's been raining forever in Glimmerbrook. So this is like the first time we are seeing the sun in Glimmerbrook and it's like amazing. But yeah, in the last episode, Araminta banished Anya. And then I actually did a little story post on my Instagram. It was basically Araminta coming into the room after the whole thing with Anya. Basically what you guys saw in the last episode, just like a more detailed explanation of it. But now Han is feeling super protective over Araminta. He knows about Anya now too. She's told him about Anya. I will put the link to the post in the description below so you guys can see it as well. But yeah, Han's just feeling super overprotective about her. I think, I mean, I think Han is like really, really in love with her. He hasn't told her that yet, but like he is. And now Araminta, I believe she's already told her mother. I feel like this is a day or two after the whole thing has happened. So like Araminta already told her mother about the whole thing. I feel like they probably have some sort of cameras or something like that in the palace. Just after what happened with Emperor Zhao, I would assume, I would hope that they had cameras around so they could probably see what happened with Anya too. I do think that Araminta's mother, Mei Lin, maybe she doesn't think that Araminta made the right choice. Maybe she thinks that they should have locked her up, but maybe she didn't want to tell her that because she was so shaken up after what happened. And yeah, I think Mei Lin might be a little bit worried. I'm sure she's told Takashi about the whole thing too. So Takashi knows. Also, if you didn't know, I've mentioned this on the streams before and I've posted something on my Instagram before, but Han and his family, I think it would be a tradition for them to have to learn wushu growing up. Like I think him, Akio and Tai, they all had to learn. So Han, I mean, pretty good at self-defense. And I think that he might want to try teaching Araminta to some things as well. Oh, and then also I did ask you guys in the last episode if we should have like a birthday party for Araminta. Araminta, not Anya, but like for Araminta because they were supposed to be turning into young adults. I don't think Araminta would have wanted to have a birthday party. Maybe they'll celebrate another day. Oh gosh, sorry, I need to like find them. But I did age her up into a young adult and age Anya up into a young adult too. So they're already young adults. Han tried to like make her a little cake. It was really cute. And Han has also been here for several days, but I do think this is his last day and he's going to be going home soon. Araminta is going to be visiting him and staying for a few days in like a week or two as well. And Han still hasn't proposed yet, but I think he wants to propose at the Lotus Garden. If you don't remember, that's where his special place is back at home, like the gardens when Araminta went to go visit him. That's what he showed her. But then Araminta actually has not told him yet that Anya was behind their whole arranged marriage thing. And I think she, I mean, she wants to, she needs to, she just doesn't know how yet. So I think she's gonna have to tell him that soon too, probably when she goes over there. I think she might be a little bit nervous about telling him also. I think she wants to tell him so he doesn't feel like forced into the marriage, you know? Oh, they're so cute. But yeah, so he doesn't feel forced into it. So we'll definitely see them. Um, and then I, I have a lot to get to in this episode, so I can't focus on too much, but Meilin and Kentaro are still seeing each other. I think they're still trying not to like make their relationship public quite yet, even though they now know who the killer is officially, but I think they are still going to kind of keep it to themselves a bit. I think that maybe Meilin and Takashi might be moving out soon. I'm sure Glimmerbrook will find another place to have their second palace somewhere, but kind of how Evangeline and them, 
like they move out because the monarch and their family needs to start soon. Maybe I'll wait until Araminta gets married. And then Takashi and Elena are still seeing each other and they're really cute too. But yeah, so we'll see more of them. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on them. Okay, so we are now with Ariana and her parents, Princess Belle and Prince Francisco or Earl Francisco and Countess Belle. So now, okay, so this is Lady Ariana. She cut her hair. Um, she wanted to look a little bit more mature when she tells her parents about her older boyfriend, Sir Thomas. So she has told them about him, but now they are meeting him. They've invited him to go to dinner. So we are at, I just downloaded this on the gallery. It's called the Royal Opera Theater and it's a restaurant. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so they have now been seated. So this is Sir Thomas and he's here. They have like their own little private room too. That's kind of cute. Okay, so Francisco, her father, Ariana's father, he has to introduce himself. So Belle's already met him at parties. I would assume that Francisco has seen him at parties, but it, I don't know. It just seems like Belle has been at the parties more than Francisco has. But maybe Belle's going to like ask about Day. I think that Belle would know that he's a little bit older because she's met him before. She knows of him. So I think that maybe Ariana did warn her beforehand because she knows that her mom has met Thomas before. And she was like, oh yeah, it's Sir Thomas. And Belle was like, oh, isn't he a little bit older? But yeah, maybe Belle just doesn't really know what to think about it. I do think that Thomas is probably like, nine years older than Ariana. I do think that Belle knows that if Francisco knew Thomas's age, like she doesn't know how he would react. She doesn't know if he'd be comfortable with Ariana dating someone that much older than her. But maybe Belle is going to tell Francisco later, hun, you know, he's like a lot older. But yeah, let me know what you think. I mean, so far he likes him and Belle is so sweet. She's so kind. She's not gonna make a scene or anything like that. She's going to be as understanding as possible because if you guys have seen season one, you would remember that Belle is like the sweetest person ever. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you think that she would tell Francisco after this whole thing, at least if he knows later, at least he liked him at first. So that's a good thing too. Also, Ariana is wearing Belle's dress that she wore as a teenager a lot, which I think is so cute. So she's wearing her mother's dress. But yeah, okay. So I just wanted to see them. Now she's told her parents they seem to like Thomas. So that's really good. So now we are at the second Windenburg Palace because we're here to see Diana. Now someone did say in the last episode, maybe now that Bellatrix and Charles has moved out. Maybe Diana and Evangeline can move back into the Windenburg Palace, but that's not why they moved out. They moved out because that's not their home anymore. I mean, if you guys have seen The Crown, you know that Queen Elizabeth II, her mother and sister moved out when she became queen. So it's just a thing. They're just, they live in the second palace now, which is fine. It's fine. They knew this would happen one day. It's not that big of a deal. They're not lonely or anything. Like, yes, they miss Charles and Bellatrix, but they're not lonely here. But we're here to see Diana because I noticed we met him in the last episode, but this is Abraham Kirkland. He's the royal portrait painter. And there is a little bit of a romantic relationship going on. I did forget to mention in the last episode that Abraham is made by Fandom Angel 09. So that is her gallery ID if you wanted to download the original Abraham. Also, if you missed it too, Charles and Bellatrix, the first episode of their miniseries came out too. So there's some interesting stuff going on with them. Okay, why won't the lights turn on? Does it have to be like later or something? It's very dark in here. Um, um, well, I mean, okay, I'm gonna have her leave anyway now. We're going to have Diana talk to Abraham, maybe go on like a late night date somewhere. Also, I did mention this in my character Q&A on Instagram, but I haven't mentioned it here. So Evangeline and Amira, they are working on a foundation under King Henry IV's name, and it's going to help support people with disabilities and the elderly. And I feel like Diana has been helping them with that as well. And maybe it's making her more interested in doing philanthropic work. So maybe she can talk to Megan and Kellen about that too. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that real quick. So it's very dark in here. I'm going to have her meet Abraham. I don't know if she's, maybe she has told her mother. I feel like her and her mother are very close. Maybe she is telling her that she's like seeing this guy. I mean, Evangeline knows Abraham too. I'm sure that he's done her portrait as well. It's late though. So like, I'm trying to think where they would go. Maybe they would go to the Windenburg Square. Let's go there. All right, so we are now here with Abraham. So this is gonna be their first date. So I am going to have Diana ask him on an official date and we'll just have it here at the Windenburg Square. Oh no, it says this lot is not available for a date. Well, shoot, let's go to the Secret Garden Cafe. I feel like that could be a little late night cafe hangout spot. I also, okay, so we're here now, but I just changed it to fall because I changed it to summer because I was taking pictures and it's greener in the summertime. Time. It's supposed to be fall. We're supposed to be into winter soon. And then in the spring is gonna be Han and Aramid's wedding. So yeah, it's fall. Just wanted to say that, but it's almost gonna be winter. Now they 
are on their first official date, so we need to sit and talk, but why don't we grab some drinks? So we'll do drinks for here. But we do need to learn a little bit more about Abraham. Right now, she doesn't really know much about him, but we will have them go sit here together. Oh, well, they need to get their drinks first, but they'll sit there together. So yeah, I think they just maybe had hit it off. And now we have Abraham and her here, and he just asked her to get coffee, like a late night cup of coffee one time. But yeah, I think with Diana for a while, cause she's just like, she's a daydreamer. She just wants to do a lot of things. I think she's just interested in a lot, but she does seem like the type of person to just really want to help people. So I feel like her getting into things where she can help people, that'll be good for her. Like starting the foundations and all that stuff. Basically what like Megan and Kellen are doing. Also in the past, I said that Megan and Kellen were doing charity work. Let's call it philanthropic work because I think that fits it a lot better. But Diana did learn that Abraham is creatively gifted. So there's something we know about him. Wow, they can have their first kiss already? <gasps> I don't know if we'll do that yet. I might wait to do that. That's a little, I don't know. That's a little soon. I feel like Diana has known him for a good amount of time. Like he did just start at the Windenburg Palace, but maybe like a few months ago. So I feel like she met him a few months ago. They got to talking a little bit more at Bellatrix's going away dinner. And then maybe he was doing her portrait and they got to talk a lot. And then they started flirting. I also mentioned in the last episode that I don't think Diana's crush on Makai is really there anymore. Like it was definitely more of like a childhood thing. Diana, she's going to be turning into a young adult actually fairly soon. Probably Probably in like two episodes maybe. Oh my gosh, this woman, please go away, just go away. Also, I want to add, cause I think some people were confused about this. To me, young adult age is like 21. I know it's not in real life, it's supposed to be 18, but for like story purposes, because there's so many teenagers and I was like trying to figure out everybody's ages, let's just say it's 21. That's gonna be the age when they turn into young adults. So like Araminta is 21, Diana will say is like 20 now. And Abraham, I think is like not too much older than her. I think he's just really talented artist. Artist. So that's why he's like the official portrait painter. And I think that Diana, I mean, she likes music. I think that she likes art as well. So I think that's something that they can talk about a lot. Probably not going to have them have their first kiss yet. Also though, all the machinimas with the first kisses, like I'm not doing that for everyone. I just want to make that very clear. Machinimas are mostly going to be for like our main characters. And most of the time the main characters are like our monarchs and then the heirs, because I cannot focus on everyone, especially if we're having all these children. I just cannot. So just wanted to make that clear. But they're getting along really well. They're having a pleasant conversation. Diana's feeling very flirty. Well, Diana should ask if he's single. Let's do that at least. She asked if, okay, good. Abraham's single. All right, cool. But yeah, so that's what we'll leave here for now. We've got this new relationship that we can start seeing a lot too. So I mean, this episode is pretty much just like all new relationships. Is that Jabari? It is. Oh, and that's Zamora. Oh, okay. Well, you guys should say hi to each other. I'm not controlling either of them though, so I can't. Maybe. Jabari spying for Amira on Diana. I don't know, probably not, but maybe it was just a coincidence that he was there. Diana should probably say hi to her brother-in-law, so let's do that. I'll have Diana introduce, oh no, no, never mind. He knows Abraham. Abraham would go say hi too. But yeah, um, I was gonna say this later, but we will see Zamora in the next episode. I'll talk about that later in the video. Let's go see Corn Farm. We're gonna go see Corn Farm right now. Okay, so we are now at the Willow Creek Royal Farm. We are here with Corn Boy and Farm Boy, AKA Cornelius and Ellis. They have had their first kiss, as you guys can see. So let me talk about the machinima. I do think, cause I have mentioned before that Ellis was just flirting around Cornelius all the time. So I think he was really waiting for Cornelius to show a sign of interest before ever making a move. And I think that Cornelius has had these feelings, but he didn't really know what to do with them. And he didn't ever tell Ellis that he had these feelings. He didn't, hasn't told anyone that he had these feelings. I mean, they've been such good friends. Ellis has like really made Cornelius a better person. He still has some ways to go, but he's definitely helped Cornelius a lot. Now, I do realize that they were fighting before they kissed. I think that Ellis has told Cornelius that he really, like after the kiss, I think he told him like, I just want you to be grateful. Like it makes me sad when you're not grateful for your family because Ellis doesn't have a family. Like his mother died. So I think Cornelius realizes that. And I think he did realize it too. I think he was just being a little bit stubborn and he was just so focused on like, he didn't want Ellis to think badly of him. Like he just wants Ellis to be on his side. I think that's the thing. But I think Cornelius is going to work on being more open to other people's opinions. I think Ellis will try to also understand the pressure that Cornelius goes through as well. I think that Ellis is just really happy now that Cornelius has finally admitted his feelings. But I did have help brainstorming this scene. I brainstormed it with the person who made Ellis, which is Tally. Tally is Tally X Sims on Instagram. She does these cute little scenes of Ellis and Cornelius on there 
if you want to see those. So I'll put her Instagram in the description below as well. But yeah, they're both feeling very flirty. Now we have to figure out where to go from here too. I think that they might try to keep their relationship a secret for just a little bit longer. I don't know if Cornelius is quite ready for everyone to know. I don't think he was ready to tell Ellis how he felt either. I think Ellis is like cooking them a midnight snack right now, which I think is adorable. But yeah, I don't think Cornelius was like, he didn't expect to tell Ellis how he felt. It just kind of came out. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. I think that, I mean, his family loves Ellis. They love him. They are just so happy that Cornelius is just not as angsty. But I do think now that Cornelius is getting older, I think that his parents are probably putting a little bit more pressure on him. So I think that's just what that whole thing was. I think he'll learn to stop complaining about them so much. Oh, are you not gonna invite Cornelius to come eat with you? Maybe not. Maybe he said he wasn't hungry, but let's just have you guys talk over here. But yeah, I don't, okay. So I wonder if he would ask him to be his official boyfriend. Like even if they keep it a little bit more of a secret, they could still be in an official relationship. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Maybe they should wait a little bit. Maybe they would, maybe Cornelius would want to wait a little bit. But yeah, I'm really excited for them. We'll see them a lot more later. Again, the heirs are mostly going to be our main characters in this series. So Cornelius is an heir and we'll get to the other ones too. But for the next episode, so we will focus on Izara and King Cayman because now King Cayman knows that Nephthys is his baby. I think he's maybe considering raising Nephthys, like taking Nephthys from Azara and raising her. I don't know if you guys think he should do that or like if he should just pay child support or like, I don't know. Let me know your theories on them. We'll also be seeing Makai in the next episode and the kids. We're gonna see them in the next episode because I think Makai, maybe he'll just, I don't know, take the kids out on another, like maybe they'll take him out for ice cream or something with Kona. Oh, and Kona has babies. He has new babies. So I'll show you them in the next episode too. So yeah, we have all of our new relationships happening. So it's a lot of fun. I'm excited to focus on them all more. But yes, we're gonna end this episode here. Let me know what you guys think of Corn Farm, Cornelius and Alice, and also Han and Araminta, their proposal, and then Diana and Abraham, and also Ariana and Thomas. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.